you're alive. Okay, go ahead. Hello, everyone. I'm Marilyn Moore, and I'm here with John Moore. This is the Small Business Web Tech Show, and we are very excited today to have as our special guest Mark Traphagen, who will um, be coming on in just a moment. Uh, we're going to be talking about social media for small business, and uh, I'm really excited to hear uh, Mark filter his Mark remarks through the lens of small business for all of our, all of us in that category. Um, before we get started, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping and shout outs to our sponsors. First of all, many thanks to the Oceanside Chamber of Commerce, who has been sponsoring um, this event for many years now, and um, some of their special things that they do in the community are right there for you. We also have um, our own business, Sonic Spider LLC. On Right Start, uh, I represent Right Start websites on Google Plus, as does John. And we also have another arm of our business, Sonic Web Tech, for on-demand technical support. And behind the scenes that you don't see is uh, Rich P. Hanna of Create a Computer Network who is all about uh, IT, and, and, here's Rich. and there he is. He, he, we can't show him live because of the way our setup is, but here he is. that's him, minus all the cords and screens. Yeah, cords. <laughs> okay, let's uh, want to talk a little bit, introduce our, our guest, Mark. Uh, Mark is the Senior Director for Online Marketing for Stone Temple Consultant. He assists the executive team in formulating and implementing all online marketing strategy for Stone Temple brand, as well as being available as needed to consult with Stone Temple clients in, ex in areas of his expertise. He uh, shares his ideas as he writes for another top, a number of top online publications, is a sought after speaker for major online publication conferences, which you can see the little pictures of here, him doing various conferences, and also there is the the DME and the DMA show that he and Mark do. He and um, Eric do. Eric do, I'm sorry. <laughs> he and Mark do. Yeah, Mark does it with himself, right, Mark? <laughs> and uh, and Mozcom, PubCon, SMX, and Search Exchange. So with that, let's, um, let's uh, move on to... So hello, Mark. Hello, Mark. How you doing? Hey, hello everyone. So good to be with you tonight. Thanks for the, the kind invite and uh, just this is a wonderful, wonderful time because uh, we were chatting before the, the show started and I know uh, John from several uh, shows we've been on together, but this is, uh, I've known Marilyn on Google Plus for, for a long time, but this is the first time we've ever actually spoken via Hangout. So a um, little bit of fun, but nice, uh, something I've looked forward to, especially just personally, to be with you all tonight. Well, thank you. Certainly, the same here. It's really a thrill for us. Well, for me in particular, as I said, first time. <clears throat> um, why don't we start off by you sort of talking a little bit about your passions in terms of, of social media and stuff so we can people can get, who don't know you as well, can kind of get a, a, a framework and from which you're coming from, in addition to the things I've already said about you. <laughs> okay? Okay, sure. Um, yeah, there's some things that, that really kind of... Uh, get my engines going and that you know that are my uh, my personal interests that I pursue very deeply and that I look to help the businesses that we work with uh, on as well as as Stone Temple I'll, I'll just take a step back for a moment and say you know uh, I've been working for Stone Temple for a little over a year now and it, you know it's been absolutely incredible in so many ways but one of the one of the great things is that uh, you know Eric Gengo who founded uh, Stone Temple Consulting and has built it to what it is today really gets the value of online marketing and he does what uh, the Google engineers call eating your own dog food which is uh, you know, not just telling clients well you should do this but being able to say you should do this because we've done it and we know it works so part of what we do in our uh, in our own marketing our marketing of Stone Temple is it's really we see it as a laboratory we're getting to try out things and dig deep into data and, and build things, find out, kick the tires, find, get under the hood, find out what works, what doesn't work, and that only that not only helps us to do better at our own marketing, but also to help our clients uh, better with that information. But you asked about you know, my, my particular passions in the areas of marketing, and right now there are two that really have my, my 
deep focus. Uh, the one and probably the primary one is, uh, you know, it's not a not a topic I came up with, but you know, the concept of personal brands, meaning uh, a an individual person out in the arena of of life who becomes known as an individual for certain expertise, for certain uh, areas that, where they're helpful, and get starts getting a reputation, starts getting an audience, but in particular that personal brand as a representative of, uh, of a company or a larger brand. And by when I say larger brand, I mean larger than themselves. It doesn't mean it has to be a mega corporation. It could be a small business. But this is something that goes back, you know, uh, goes way, way back uh, in its effectiveness. When uh, I often tell the story when I was a kid. I remember, like, one of my first exposures to this was uh, growing up in uh, New Jersey, just outside New York City. Uh, every Saturday morning, my mom would tune in to a three-hour garden advice show on a radio station in North New Jersey. And the guy was, a, was the owner of a local you know, garden store, garden shop, where you would go, you know, kind of place where it has the big greenhouses and stuff outside, and you buy everything from lawn ornaments to shrubs to you know, the implements that you need to do your gardening, all that kind of stuff. And he would just give advice on the phone for three hours over the radio every Saturday morning. And he just got known. People loved him. He was very personable. He obviously knew what he was talking about. He was extremely helpful. And people like my mom would drive past four or five other garden shops to go to his shop because he had been so helpful to her. You know, a combination of she liked him, so that, that got associated with his business, and his expertise got associated with his business. So that's what I call a personal brand representative. Now the other thing, just quickly, and this is more centering around what I think we're going to be talking about tonight, is, uh, you know, I'm primarily a social media marketing guy. That's what I'm known for. That's my you know, primary in area of activity and interest. But my passion is now helping people to get social media in its right place in their overall marketing vision, their overall marketing structure, and to stop just doing social media because that's what everybody does for the sake of doing social media but to get it in a place where it's really going to work and be effective for them. So those are, the, those are a couple of the things that I'm really focusing on these days. Well, that Great. is perfect. Perfect because segue it, there. Right, perfect segue <laughs> to where we're headed next. Um, and you talked about people understanding the, the parts of social media marketing, not just doing it to do it. And your guest post for Marketing Land is your social media marketing cart before your horse. Just that article just totally blew both John and I away. We just thought it nailed it perfectly what the issues are for um, us, particularly as small business people. And that's where we want to take off from. Uh, you started your uh, post with some pretty bleak statistics about social media marketing that makes it seem, well, kind of pointless to if you were just reading the statistics. Um, you mentioned that 15% of the respondents in a, a Forrester survey, survey trusted social media posts. Only 15% trusted social media posts. Facebook and Twitter account for only two hundreds of the acquisitions, and in 2013, only 1% of the Black Friday sales were attributable to social media. So reading that, you're thinking, oh, okay, why should I be spending my time there, especially when I don't have very much of it? So that can is a huge source of frustration for small business people. It's one more thing to do. We're not getting any sales from it. Yet we know that you feel strongly that social media is a valid, viable, and valuable marketing channel. So could you define what social marketing, media marketing is and what it isn't? In other words, what is it going to do for your business and what should you not expect it to do? Great questions. And I think the first thing that's so important to understand is that Social media is a particular channel. I mean, we use that term channel um, because your, your marketing message has to get out all different ways. It depends on your business, you know, where you're going to go. It's like before we started the, uh, the show here, somebody in the, the live audience, uh, there where you are, 
asked, you know, what what is my favorite social network? And you know, I said, that's that's hard to answer because it depends on what I'm doing and, and what I'm wanting to accomplish at any given time, what audience I want to reach, uh, you know, what, what message I have. But more to the point here, it's that understanding what different channels do and what they, what they do well. And social media, I think, in general, is uh, in its right place, is a place that's great for branding, uh, for building awareness of your brand, and that's something that anybody who understands marketing should value. Uh, that, that's what disturbed me about the article in which I read those, uh, those statistics and those, those quoted studies. And a pretty well-known person who was writing this article and advising people saying, like, you should just forget about social media. Unless you're in a few specific businesses, just forget about it because it doesn't drive sales. You know, people don't trust it. And I said, you know, wait a minute. You're asking it to do things. You know, I said it's like um, it's like grading a chemistry student on her artistic ability. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're asking it to do things it doesn't do. But branding should be something that any marketer understands the, the, the value of. People need to know you. They need to know who you are. They need to know what you're about. Um, that needs to matter to them in some ways. And I think social media can be very effective in doing that. And uh, things like uh, building. Uh, we were talking earlier about uh, you know brands that that build a, a personality um, that that get a personal connection with people. You can uh, a way to connect with people in a way that they they have not just uh, reasons facts that they might be able to tick off about why they would do business with you, but they feel like they like you, that they they want to be around you, they want to be associated with your brand. Like it's, that's something social media can do. So there's a number of things that fit in. And a, a business owner or marketer should understand that there's a lot that has to happen in people's minds and hearts before they get to the point where they're going to buy from you. And social media, I think, can, can be an important part of building all of that, being a part of that chain, that story that leads up to where they say, okay, I'm at least going to do a free trial, or I'm going to sign up for your email list, or I'm even going to buy something from you. Now, one more thing about that, and this is, you know, getting into the, we'll, we'll move more into detail on this, I'm sure, but getting into the crux of the article, is that my problem, the reason I wrote this article, was that I was seeing why people were misunderstanding social media, or even in some cases giving up on it, is because they were making that their marketing. They were starting and ending there. And it, it, I don't think it works well that way. I think social media is not an end in itself, but it is the outgrowth. That's why I use the cart before the horse. There are horses you have to have in place pulling your social media cart. But if you have those horses in the right place and you understand those, first of all, all your marketing is going to go better, but then your social media cart is going to be pulled along with it. And I think that's the right place. So even though I'm a social media marketer, I don't put social media first. There's a lot of other things that have to be put in place before you even start talking about your social media campaigns. Which is exactly what we'd like you to talk about <laughs> next, is what is that horse? That lo the love the whole analogy. Mm. It's, it makes it so clear. But what are the, the things that we, the ducks in a row, not to mix too many metaphors, or the horses that you have to have in place before you start that whole social media piece? Well, you know, it is horses, too, because um, one of the things that, uh, that I've, I've come to understand, and I don't know a lot about horses or you know, old-fashioned old wagon trains, but uh, I know enough to be dangerous, and <laughs> I understand that you know, with, with, uh, with the big, you used to see the, um, the big you know, wagon trains that would have multiple horses, you know, pairs of horses out in front of them, and with that or with a, with a dog sled team, whatever you want to add, analogy you want to take, that there is a lead horse or a lead dog. There's a, there's a horse that's in the front, of the of the group, however many are pulling the wagon, and that horse is the horse that you trust the most. It's the horse that knows the way. It's the horse that you know you're best able to communicate with. So you put that in the lead. Well, for me, that is your brand. The first horse you have to have in place is your brand. So what I mean by that is before you're going to do talk about you know what what social media network should I be on? How many times should I tweet a day? Uh, how do I get more retweets? You know, these are all the questions that you get from marketers. They're like, whoa, slow down. Forget about all that for now. What's your brand? Who are you? First of all, what do you, you know, number one thing. What is, what is your brand value? 
What does it stand for? What uh, you know? And you'd be amazed by how maybe not how many business owners can't even define that. Like, why are you in business? What are you there to do? What you know? What's your purpose? And then out of that comes your unique value proposition. What do okay? You know, you might have that purpose, but there's probably a lot of other people that do something similar or sell something similar or have a similar service. What makes you stand out in the marketplace? What makes you unique? Why would I buy from you and not somebody else who's doing something similar to what you have? You need to have that defined. And then out of that comes your brand story. And I think it really is in terms of a story. It's You need to have this in your mind, a narrative of this is where we want to take people from. This is the, the problem that some people have out there. Whether they know it or not, they have this problem. And <laughs> that I, I need to get connected with them, I need to meet them on their journey, find a way to meet them on the road and say, hey, brother, sister, you have this problem. It's something that you need to solve. It's either about you know, how to get more business or it's you know, how to um, fix the dent in my car or, you know, my, or how to get rid of the aphids in my petunias. Whatever it is, you, know, you have this problem and I need to find a way to connect with you and enter the journey with you to help you toward the solution of that problem and lead you down a journey. Eventually, like you see, the solution to my problem or a solution, part of it, is something involving an association with your brand, your company. So again, you know, what's your what's your uh, what's what's the value of your brand? What does it stand for? What does it exist for? What's your unique value proposition? What makes you stand out in the marketplace? What do you bring uniquely? And what's the story that you have to tell? So I'll stop there to see if there's any questions. But that's that's the first horse. And a lot of times, we do this with, I, I tell you, we, we take on new clients who are major companies who have hundreds of employees who can't tell you those things. It's not just small business people, but, but certainly a lot of small business people. So if I was starting out with anybody who's in the room or anybody who's watching tonight, and you said, you know, Mark, I want you to help me with, with your social media marketing, the first question I wouldn't be asking you is how many Twitter followers do you have? The first question I ask you wouldn't be like, you know, have you tried out Facebook yet? Facebook ads. I wouldn't even talk about social media. I'd say, tell me what your brand is, what you stand for, and what your story, the journey that you take people on. So that's step one. And I'll get into why, as we move along here, I'll get into, you know, why that's important to know. What does that have to do with my social media marketing? We'll get into that because we're going to be taking everybody on a story tonight. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, uh, that sounds fabulous. And, yeah. But you're so right that that's such an easy, well, either people don't know that that's a step they need to take to identify their values, their identity, their unique, or they just kind of gloss over it and kind of think, you know, they kind of have something generally kind of rumbling around in their head that maybe is not a very clear articulation of, of what exactly that all entails. Yeah. So I think that's such an important point. Yeah, and a lot of it too is that first step opens the door for letting people get to know you mm -hmm. and your values and, and, and that, that's where the connection comes in. People look at you and they see what you're about and then they connect with that. And so yeah. that, they, there, there you get that personal connection then that gets the process started. And, well, look, they, and helps them pay attention to you too because, because they are connecting with you. Well, let's, let's put it in a very practical, you know, let's use a different analogy here, that of a, of a, of a party that you might go to. You know, a, a meetup like this could be a meetup, could be a, a you know, cocktail party, could be a dinner party, whatever. Church gathering doesn't matter. You, you know, you're at something, some gathering, and there's people around you've never met before. And they start to mingle in the crowd. And think about when you've been at occasions like that, like who are the people you end up being engaged with and attracted to? The people that when you walk out, you say like, you know, you made sure, I hope I got that, I hope I got her business card. I want to talk to her again. It's the people who have a certain amount of confidence. They, they know who they are. They know what they're about. And I'm not even talking necessarily about a business situation. You're just a social situation. But people who, and I'm talking about being egotistical. I'm not talking about, you know, being in people's faces. I'm just talking about people who have that, that quiet confidence of, I know who I am. I know what I'm about. I know why I'm here. Those are attractive people. Those are people that, you know, you, you like talking to. You want to hear more from them. Well, that's social media. Okay, social media is that party. 
So before you go to the party, know who you are. Know what you're about. Have something worth saying, a message worth communicating. So that's the first step. Well said. Now, and I'm thinking back to your article, and I'm assuming that the next step has to do with content. Am I correct there? You are correct. You read the article. <laughs> so, <laughs> I yeah. just didn't want to make too many assumptions on, on air here. So would you <laughs> like to walk us through that next step? Yeah, and, and these are, you know, these are step, any kind of thing like this when you're talking about steps. It's not necessarily, you know, that everybody's going to do like, you know, uh, all right, I'm, I'm not going to do anything in marketing for six months. I'm just going to, you know, sit and define what my brand is. And, you know, I'm not, not saying that. But these are things, a lot of these things will be developing uh, concurrently, but they'll work better as you get them in this order and, and, and you know this. Good so point. Uh, and before we leave the brand thing, one more thing about it is, it can also be a mistake to say, like, okay, done that, done the homework, you know, define my brand, I know my unique value proposition, I know my brand story. But that's something that you should be revisiting from time to time. Uh, that will change over time. It'll change in response to the marketplace. It'll change in response to your customers. It'll change in response to things that you learn about your business and, and learn as you go on. So you may need to think that through, that through again. So enough about that. Now, <laughs> you're still not ready to go to the party, Okay you're still not ready to uh, go out and do the social media because the next step, as you said, is content. Because you've got to have you know, something to say and you've got to have a message and it's got to be expressed. That's what you do with content. That's what content is. So now this is why we spent the time doing the exercise of figuring out our brand and what is our brand is about because your content flows out of that. Now there's other things. I don't want to oversimplify here. You're doing market research. You're finding out what are the questions. Remember we said that, that customer journey, that, you know, what are the problems that people, what are the pain points that people have out there that my business could help solve? But it's really out of where the confidence comes, where really good content comes from, is that solid understanding, that confidence that we've got something here that can help people. How do we let them know? Well, you know, you can do the old-fashioned advertising and just say, you, you know, we can solve your problem. You know, that, that's what most advertising does. Well, all right, why should I believe that? You know, every, every you know, brand A, B, C, down to X is all saying, we can solve your problem. Content is where you get to show that off. Um, number one, that's one thing you can do with it, is you get to display what you know or what you do, your expertise. Remember that uh, garden shop that I talked about, you know, earlier on? He's giving away knowledge. And you think, like, why is he doing that? Because that made that connection, people come to trust him. They come to say, like, you know, time and again, Joe answered my questions. And so he's the one I want to go through with business. But also, um, content is where you get to show off your brand's personality, its identity. Um, and, you know, that has a lot to do with what your brand is and, and who your audience is. To determine that, you know, it could be everything from being lighthearted and entertaining to being deadly serious, uh, you know, those are all things you got to make a decision, but your content shows that off. And finally, your content also, having that in, in place, uh, and this you know, could be anything from blog posts to videos to all kinds of things that you, that you produce, and assets that you produce, downloadables, um, you know, tools that you build, all these kinds of things. They, they create a substance that people can go to. So when you begin to go out in this, in the, into the world with your social media uh, marketing, making your social media connections, eventually if you're doing it right, people are going to want to take a look at you. Some people are going to start to say like, all right, this guy, I've been talking to this guy for months and, and, and you know, what's he about? They might visit your website. They start to poke around. The content says like, whoa, you, you know, these people know what they're talking about or there's something going on here. There's substance. It's not just marketing slogans. So that's why I say the next step is that content. And finally, of course, the content gives you something worthwhile sharing when you go out on social media. So you're not just making you know, social media statements. You're actually sharing things that are useful. You have assets that you can point to. When you encounter somebody out in the social media world who has a particular problem or need that you know your business could speak to, you have an asset. You say, hey, here's a piece of content we've created that answers that question or that will help you to think about that in the right way, or whatever it might be. Uh, 
before we leave content, the whole content creation piece I know can be very intimidating for small business people, particularly if you don't have someone in your business or on your team that that's their designated job. Um, and I know we don't want to get totally into content creation because that's another <laughs> huge um, topic. But I also know that you did a, a Moz Whiteboard Friday talk on I see content everywhere, which was a very reassuring um, talk about how really there's lots of, of content there. We just need to be aware of it. Can you just kind of do a quick summation of that because I thought it was very reassuring as a small business person because sometimes I'm racking my brain for okay what can well, I like to write so what can I write about but whether it's a video or a slideshow or whatever or a podcast sure I'd be glad to because that is a big thing it's really important most people if you talk to them who when you talk start talking to people about you know you need to be creating some content uh, their number one problem is, is not going to be creating the content uh, you know that, that has its own set of problems maybe too, but that's not their biggest problem. Time and again the number one problem is what do I write about? What do I make a video about? What, what content should I be producing? I don't even know where to start. And in that, uh, that Whiteboard Friday that you're, you're talking about, uh, and I'm sure we can, we can share a link to that later, um, what I, the basic concept I'm talking about that, that I had to learn was developing what I call content eyes. To begin to just like, you have to begin to think in this mindset of looking for content ideas everywhere. And one of the simplest ideas, if you're a small business, one of the best sources of that is simply listening to your customers. And this is, by the way, also where social media comes in as a valuable resource. Social media gives you the opportunity to enter into and or you know listen to, observe real conversations by your prospects. What are they talking about? What are they saying their problems are or their needs are or their, their confusions are? And, you know, having content eyes, content ears means you have to be thinking in terms of that all the time. If somebody asks a question, you might see even, you know, in, my, in, that, um, in that presentation, I said a lot of times um, I'll be reading somebody else's blog post and then I'll look, you know, I said, well, that was really good. It was a good blog post. And then down at the bottom, you'll see people start posting questions in the comments. And maybe I'll see a question that, that either... Doesn't, doesn't get answered, nobody answers it, or I feel like the answer is incorrect or inadequate. And I think, like, I can answer that. Now, sometimes instead of, you know, I will do it right there, but I'll take that smart, short answer that I might give in the, in, the, uh, in the comment, and then I go develop that into a piece of content, larger content. Because nine times out of ten, that person, if that person has that question, there are hundreds or thousands of people out there that have that same or similar yes. question. So that's number one is you know listening for those kinds of questions. And the other thing I said in that, um, and I'll, I'll I'll leave people to go find that when we um, when we share the I link think to we it. Do have the link yeah. in the details of this. Oh, great, interview. great, great. Okay. Um, if you watch it, it's just just a ten minute video, uh, and I, I talk about different ways that you can start to, to as you as you read. If you're in a if you're a business person, I would hope that you are always educating yourself about your business. You're reading. You know whether whether it's trade journals or blog posts or wherever the sources of information are, you know you're reading, you're thinking, you're listening about your business. And I talk about ways of mashing up, of beginning to see the content eyes. Say like what I see is like I'll see like two articles that are kind of about the same topic, but maybe they they disagree with each other or they come at it from a slightly different angle. They contrast in some way. Well, I'll talk about that. I'll write a piece that talks about you know why do these two things disagree or why you know. Or why are these two things kind of Venn diagramming here? And I'll pick out the, the middle of the Venn diagram. That's a new piece of content that nobody's created before. So, again, the main point here is uh, you'll, you'll begin to get content ideas as you train yourself to listen for them. As you're watching for opportunities like, oh, that's, that's a question I could answer. Um, or I have an idea about that. And, you know, maybe people who, who would be part of my audience for my business, that's something that they're thinking about too. Uh, one more thing about that, just very quickly. There's something that, uh, and this is not in the, in the Moz thing, but I think it's important. Uh, Damian Farn Farnsworth from Copyblogger um, shared this on Google Plus today. And it's something called the, um, the knowledge problem. 
Uh, and the knowledge problem is you, if you're operating a business, you're probably an expert to some extent in your business. And that's a great asset, but it's also a liability because you just know things. <laughs> and that you know things about your business so well that they just become like you assume everybody knows that, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to take a step back from that. And that's where a lot of our listening from people can come. Uh, you know, quick example, I know I'm going on long here, but a quick example that is the, the piece that we're talking about tonight, that you know, car, uh, cart before the, or get your cart behind your horses on your social media. Um, that was actually first before it was a full-length article. It was just a slide deck that I did presented at a, at a conference. And, uh, and I went in and I thought, like, I honestly thought, I developed that, put that together, and I thought, like, okay, you know, they told me there's a lot of kind of people that have very basic understandings of this conference, keep it simple. But I was thinking, like, this is so, I was really afraid I was going to lose, like, two-thirds of the audience. I was like, this is so basic, it's so simple, everybody knows this. <laughs> I could not believe the response I got after I gave it. You know, people thought, I never thought about that before. I never thought that I should, you know, Think about my brand first. None of that develop my content. None of my content go into my social media. It, you know, and I got that. I get that again and again and again from people. And it's because you know I was I was having the problem of knowledge. To me, that was obvious, but it's not obvious to everybody else. I just want to make that point too. You know, it's it, it's a discipline of training yourself that just because you know it, don't assume everybody else knows it. You can you know you, you got to think about what stuff what stuff I know that maybe is not common knowledge that I can share. That's content. That that's yeah. a great point. Yeah, it is, and and I know in in what I do, I do a lot of technical stuff, and when I inter interface with non-technical people, that's one of the biggest problems that people in my field, the technical, really mess up, because we jump to these conclusions. We show somebody something, and we say, and we assume that they know the other five steps or the other ten steps. And I see that all the time when I see programmer, technical people mm. talking to non-technical people. There's that wide gulf is really doesn't have to be there. It's because they left out ten steps. They left out the obvious stuff that the the technical person just assumed everybody knew. So yeah, that's that's big all that's big in every business I think when you get into the expertise type business where you're doing something that is not necessarily common knowledge. You know that not everybody just knows. Now, extent taking the next step. You know, people think that there, there's this common thought that everybody should have a blog. You know that every business should have a blog, and um, I, I'd like you to address that a little bit because it, it is a bit of a myth, uh, uh, correct? And uh, I think that's a good point to, to clarify that there are many ways and channels in which to present your content, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a blog, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, you know, a blog has its, has certain values to it, and the reason why you hear that kind of general statement of you know, everybody, every business should have a blog is there are certain um, advantages right now that you can get with a blog that are hard to get anywhere else, and it just depends on how important those are to you. Um, at a very rudimentary level, and this is what got most people into business blogging back in the day, Although anybody that's uh, that's wise about it has gone way beyond this, but it's still true, is the um, the SEO um, value that uh, by SEO I mean search engine optimization. If you um, have your um, if you have your business uh, and you want it to be found online by people on search engines, uh, content and written content is still the primary way by which that will happen. So you have the um, search engines are still a ways off from being able to analyze other kinds of content as effectively. They're still very dependent on on text, so that can be one reason uh, that you know having that content up there gives a rich context for what your website and therefore your business is about, and makes it more likely that when people go on a search engine, which is you know what they do, the value of a search engine is. People are looking for information. They have a question. You know, well, you want to be there to answer that question. And if you're answering that question better than anybody else, uh, and, and, you know, that gets some attention, uh, and I'm, I'm vastly oversimplifying here, but it can, you know, it can draw the attention of search engines 
and you'll be more likely to be found by people. Um, so that you know that's one reason for having a blog or doing it in that format. But as you said, there are many many ways, and, and that's one of the great things today uh, is not only do we have many different ways to produce content, but that it's more accessible to more people than ever before. I mean, look at what we're doing right now, a hangout. Oh, I mean, I that's, you know, not only, you know, one of the wonders about a, about a hangout is not only is it a, you know, we're, we're producing content live and in color here right now for everybody who's watching, but this, uh, this content becomes a permanent video on your channel. Uh, that asset is there virtually forever and other people can find it, and you can use it in different ways. Um, so that, you know, I have a lot of friends who are good at, you know, they'll take like, do a, do a hangout, it's an hour-long hangout like this, and they'll go back and say like, you know, within that hangout, there were like four, five, six main points, and things that maybe, maybe just like three, four, five minutes on this one topic, and that was really good by itself, and that kind of answered one question. So you might take this, vi this video we're doing, it's an hour long, and come back later, and you know you chop out the five, six, seven minutes that we talked about content, and you make that a video about content um, on its own. You know you've increased the content. I always love this. Um, you know when you talk about things like like video and podcasts and audio recordings and things like that, I always love this quote by Seth Godin. When somebody asked Seth Godin, uh, you know, do you ever get writer's block? And he said, I don't know what that. You know, no. So that to me, that's like, you know, you wake up in the morning and say like, oh my gosh. I don't know what I'm going to talk about today. <laughs> Nobody does that. You know, we all talk all day long. We find things yeah. to talk about. So, if you know, if you're, you know, you may not be a good writer, or writer writing may be like this horrific chore for you, but you can talk about your business, right? So, make some videos, or you know, make some audio recordings. Um, there's just, you know, we could explore a whole gamut. But the right. the point here is that you know, there's lots of different channels. To do content, lots of different ways to do content, and those ways are more accessible to more people than they've ever been before in history. So take advantage of them. Yeah, great. Okay, we have we got a few people on our comment track. We have Tanya here, uh, who's sort of dittoing your your thoughts on contact eyes or eye spy or something here. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's a good, that's a good uh, yeah, and and that sort is... of summarize some of the things you talked about. Yeah, that's a that's a beautiful summary, Tanya, of, of what I was saying. I mean, you got it. Those are the three, the three points here. You know, people wouldn't probably understand that now out of context um, <laughs> if they just saw that. Like, what's you know, what's mash it up? Yeah. But uh, but you did summarize the uh, the points beautifully. Do we have anybody here that has a question along these lines at this point? Just on the, on just want to let our live yeah. audi uh, live audience and our online audience know that. This is a great opportunity, so feel free to we'll get, make sure you get your questions answered. Right, so if you just raise, just put your hand up if you or have comments. a thought that you want covered. Okay, let's m move on. Um, last year, Mark Schaefer wrote a post called Content Shock, mm -hmm. which created quite a bit of debate over whether there really truly was uh, an overload or, and so much content on the Internet that you just it was almost an impossibility to stand out versus the thought that excellent content will always rise to the top. Um, I don't know if that de debate was ever decisively settled, but he has come out with a um, follow-up beyond content shock. The defining trend of 2015 is content ignition, which um, he says, how do we become more clever, more resourceful, more strategic in the distribution of that investment? of content so that people actually see it, engage it, engage with it, and share it in a way that creates business value. And I'm assuming social media has got to play a major role in that. I was just wondering if you could give your thoughts on that and how it relates to small businesses using social media. Yeah, I can definitely say a couple things about that. Um, but, but first, I want to give, because we're talking you know, mostly tonight here to small businesses, and before before the show went live, we were talking about how it's easy to you know for somebody like me to pontificate about all these things. You, you know, do this, do this. You should be doing this. I'm giving you 17 assignments, and the, I can you know hear and see the small business person saying like, I've got a business to run. You know, when am I going to do this? But I want to give some hope, 
and this is something I, I, I don't I think we said this before the show began, so I want to say it here. And that is this. It's it it's all a matter of scale. You don't, you know, one of the things that um, that I don't like right now out in the world of what I do, the people, the gurus who talk about social media marketing, content marketing is all, you know, almost all the examples and all the things we talked about are big brands and big campaigns and expensive multimedia stuff, you know, and, and $10,000 infographics and all this stuff that, you know, small business people just can't do. And it, I know it makes them discouraged. They think like, well, if I can't do that, you know, and, and Mark Schaefer says there's content shock, which he defined as there's so, you know, so much content out there that people start getting blind to it. They just don't even see it anymore. It's just too much. What chance do I have? Well, here's the hope for small businesses. And I think it's this. It's a matter of scale. Um, you don't need to be Coke or you know, Pepsi or Ford or General Electric you know, or Apple. You don't need to be that. First of all, here's one thing. I think that too many businesses don't realize this, small businesses. The, the things that you worry about and you fret about and say, like, I don't I know how I'm going to get time to do this, or I don't know how I'm going to create great content. Your competitors all have that same problem. And chances are they are not doing anything about it. <laughs> if I know small businesses, you know. So if you even start doing a little, you know, just, just a, little, you know, a few minutes a day, or you know, one blog post or one video a week if you can manage that, or whatever you know, whatever the content piece is. Um, but make it, you know, make it good, make it on target, make it coming out of your heart, your passion, the values of your business, the needs of your your prospects and customers. And you're spending, you know, a few minutes a day on social media. You're already doing more than your competitors. You're already ahead of the game. The second thing that I want to say to give hope is this: you don't need everybody. And this is the you know, the magic of the internet and the magic of social media comes in is, you know, yeah, you know, if, you're, if your business is like Coca-Cola, you need everybody. You know, you need to be reaching everybody. Um, if you're a small business, you just need to start getting good at finding the relatively small group of people who care about what you do. And that may be just geographically bounded. It might be just people in your local area. It might be people that just need the particular service that you have. But you start with them. And you start building an audience. And you start small, but you nurture, you fan those flames. Once you start getting a few people even that you know are, are paying attention to you, that are, that are thinking about you, that are maybe starting to ask you some questions or engage with you, maybe starting to share your stuff a little, you latch on to those people. You serve them. You engage with them. You ask them what more you can do for them. Um, you make them feel special. Because they are then going to become, some of them are going to become the people who begin to find other people and bring other people in. And it and, and starts to grow. It, 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 you just nurture it bit by bit. But the main message I want to bring across is don't get so overwhelmed. Don't get so scared by it that you do nothing. Doing even a little bit uh, for a little time, so a few days a week. It's like exercise, right? You know? <laughs> um, uh, you know, you know it's good for you. <laughs> yeah, we know it's good for you. We all say we don't have time to do it. But you know what? If you begin to realize, like, okay, this is what's going to keep me alive and healthy and I'm going to see my grandkids get married, um, then, you know, can I move for 30 minutes a day? <laughs> I don't have time for that. Yes, you do. If it's, if it's, you know, I want, you know, I want to be alive years from now. I want to be healthy. So, you know what? I can move aside other things and say 30 minutes a day, I'm going to be in motion. I'm going to do something that gets me active. Okay? Uh, and as many days a week as I can do that. So same thing with your marketing, your online marketing. You say, like, you know, I, I can't do this all day every day, but if I understand the importance of where it's going to take my business, I can carve out 30 minutes a day or 30 minutes, three days of the week. Whatever, you know, whatever you can start, do that. And so I think that's, that's the hope that I would want to give to small businesses. Oh, that... That's great. That just really, it did give me hope. That was perfectly said, and I, I, I think that means a lot to a lot of people. Yeah. Okay, we have uh, we have a, a comment from Ami, Ami Sidhu. Sidhu. So, yeah. Sidhu. 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 <laughs> and we'll get it up here. There we go. <laughs> um, I can't read it from here, so I'm going to get over here. Question I always have, especially when it comes to Mark. Mark, what is your, uh, 
opinion of the difference between marketing and branding. Are people, small businesses, con constantly confusing the two? Huh. I, you know, I don't want people to get too hung up on, on, on terms. You know, am I doing marketing now or am I doing branding? Um, I think it's all part of it. I, I, just to give a general kind of answer to that, I think, I think branding is the bigger picture. Um, and it, it's two components of it. There's branding you do to yourself. That's what we were talking about at length earlier, which is the exercise that you put yourself through to say, what, you know, why are we here? What, are we, what is our business about? What, what is its value? What is its unique value in the marketplace? What do we bring that nobody else has? Uh, what's our message? What's the, what's the story, the journey we take our customers on? That's the internal branding. There's an external branding of, you know, it, it's a cliche, but I think it's true. Your branding really ultimately is what other people say about you, no matter what you think. And that's how you can judge yourself ultimately, I think, with as, that this wagon train we're putting together. We're saying, you know, you get your branding in mind, you, you start creating the content that flows out of that brand and that brand image, that brand value, and then you take that out into the social media world and share it and engage with it and use it to create things out there in the social media world. When you're doing that, you're creating something. Then you, then you start listening and say, what are people saying back? As people start to you know, talk about and engage with you, what they think you are is ultimately what your brand really is. It doesn't matter. You, you know, the, you know, you're getting it wrong. It's, a, you're getting it wrong. it's not their fault. It's your fault. You're not communicating right. You've got to go back to the drawing board and say, you know, how are we not communicating this in a way that people aren't getting who we are and what we are? And so the marketing part then is all of the things that you do. And this it gets down everything from, you know, we're, we're, we're dealing pretty high levels here tonight. We're getting down into now, you know, you're climbing down into the individual channels. And <clears throat> what do we do differently on LinkedIn, from Twitter, from Google Plus, if we're just talking about social media? Or, you know, what do we do different in print advertising and in and our, you know, TV and radio, if you're into that? And um, what do we do in terms of community involvement and events that we attend and participate in and community organizations? You know, that's, that's marketing. That's where you begin to say, like, okay, out of all this, out of understanding who we are and what our content's about, how do we take that out into the world and how do we connect it with people? That's, to me, that's the marketing steps. Great, great. One, one of the things I wanted to bring up uh, that we haven't, you, you've touched on it, I think, from, you've hit on it from various angles, but when I read your article, the first thing that hit me from a small business point of view was that all of these horses that we're gathering together, the neat thing is that you could ride any one of those horses. In other words, any one of those horses has value in and of itself. Uh, even if you never get to the social media, knowing who you are and being able to express what you're about, that all by itself is a good thing. Having content that you can share with your customers and help your customers, that's all good even if you never put it out on social media, just, mm -hmm. just giving it, putting it on your website and sharing it with your uh, immediate customers. So the nice thing from my point of view about this horse cart analogy is it emphasizes that all the pieces are value in and of themselves and that you're not doing a bunch of things that, have, that you have to get to the social media, otherwise you wasted your time. And uh, I think that's an important thing for small businesses is that you feel that even these small pieces are of value by themselves, even if you don't make the whole journey, you know, and you don't make it all the way to the end point. You, you've done things that are really going to help your business. That, that um, is, I, I just want to say that's such a brilliant and important insight, John. You know, it really, I think, you know, if, if people took that away from tonight, they've got the most important thing. That those things are not, you know, they're not just things to rush through, they're not homework assignments you got to get through and pass just, you know, so you get your certification. you got my branding certification. Now I'm going to do my social media. You know, they, <laughs> they really are so important. That, you know, that branding step alone, if we talked about nothing else tonight, um, just to running your business, uh, you know, if you don't know why you're there, if you don't know why you're getting up in the morning and, and, and going through the grind, uh, you know, doing the grind, as Chris Brogan calls it, um, you know, you're, you're in trouble. You're going to burn out. You're, 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 not, or you're not going to be able to serve people well. You're not going to differentiate yourself enough in the marketplace. So, yeah, I'm agreeing with you. That's, you know, that these exercises or whatever you want to call them, these steps, all have incredible value uh, within themselves, but what we're ultimately trying to do in this wagon train analogy is say not only that, but if you begin to 
to piece them together instead of just making them separate things that, that float out there alone. Mm-hmm. That's where the real value comes. That's where the real power comes because you're coming, you know, now you, if you get as far as going out into the social media world, you're not just doing social media. You're out there with a purpose. You're out there. You know who you are. You know what your message is. You've got stuff to share. You've got things to refer people to, et cetera, et cetera. That's powerful. Yeah, one of the one of the first things that that I think of when if somebody is finally making it into social media and they're looking at, you know, the whether it's Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus and they're going, okay, now what do I do? Uh, I always think that the first step is just engage, answer, ask a question of somebody. Uh, you know, you don't have to be the big post. You don't have to be the leader of the band. Uh, if you just try to participate as a first step and get and get and get into it. What, what what are your thoughts along along those lines? Yeah, I think once you go out and, and again, you know, all the things we've talked about, the other steps kind of give you the confidence. Remember that analogy we talked about the the uh, dinner party or the you know the rotary meeting that you're at before the networking event where you go in if if you know who you are, you know what you're about and you know your stuff. You know your expertise, you know uh, what helps people, you know, what your business does, then you can go out and engage. You can do those things that you're talking about and you have something we're talking about. So you're not just going into comment threads and saying, like, great post, you know, or, or yeah. good comment, you know, yay you, but you're actually coming in and saying, like, you know, hey, I can, you know, I can answer that question or I have a thought about that, you know, have you thought about it this way? Um, and that, you know, that's when people say, like, you know, how did you um, get... 100,000 plus followers on Google Plus. And um, talking about me, you know, I, I've got, got, you know, well over 110,000 followers on Google Plus now, all organic, you know, meaning I never got on any list, I never got any recommended user list or anything like that from Google Plus. Now, I was there from, you know, from the first days, which helps. But uh, from day one, nobody knew me. Nobody, you know, I was nobody. But that was my concentration. I got on, and every day I just looked for opportunities, took a little bit of time to look for conversations where I could contribute something. And when I say, you know, John, we know this is what you're saying. You know, it's not contributing in terms of like, you know, hey, look at me, I'm the expert, you know, but coming and saying like, hey, I just want to help, you know. Somebody's saying like, I don't understand how this works. And you say like, well, I got a part of it here, I got a piece of it. And then, you know, if you're, if you're doing the work behind the scenes and you're building that content, now you can begin to not just come into a, you know, discussion and say like, I got the answer, but hey, I got this asset, you know, I've got I wrote this whole post about this, or I've got this video over here, that explains that, and people say, like, you know, they look at that and say, like, oh, that really helped me, you know, and then they start telling other people, like, like Marilyn's been doing since this article came out, you know, I see her, you know, um, like, everybody, I keep getting these, these pings on Google+, Plus because, you know, she'll be talking, somebody will say, like, you know, I'm just getting started in this, it's, this whole online marketing thing is so confusing, and, she, and Marilyn will say, like, I've got this article for you, you know, she's, <laughs> she's sharing my article, you know, because it helped her. So, you're right, John, you know, that you go out and you do that, but you have something. I always say there's got to be some there there. You have something that you can constructively bring to people, and if you do that, slowly but surely, people are going to begin to, you know, beat a path to your door. And then you start to get that momentum going out there where you've got hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people who are working for you for free because they've come to know you, trust you, love you, believe in what you're doing, believe you've helped them, you've seen you helped other people, and so they're out there being your evangelist. They're sharing your stuff. They're building links to your site. They're pointing people in your direction. Now, that takes time to do to build that up, but that's the goal because remember we talked about scale earlier. You know, I'm one person, and I can't possibly do all the things that I'm that are happening because of me. It's not to brag. I'm just saying this is what happens that bring benefit to Stone Temple Consulting. It's because I've been investing in it for years, and now I have an audience out there that knows me, that trusts me, that likes my stuff, that shares it, and that, that increases the value, you know, 10, 100,000 fold of everything that I do. So it makes the time investment worthwhile. Well, one of the th- another analogy that you had in the article that, and I believe we have links in the details yes, of, yes. The, of mm-hmm. the slide share, the article, and the um, right. they're all there. the Moz uh, whiteboard party talk. Um, but 
you also had the analogy of that social media is not instant coffee, which was another brilliant, easy to understand. And what you were just saying, how you've put in the time and it all comes to fruition, but it's not it's not an instant results type of, of activity. Yeah, and that's why all the components have to be meaningful as well. Because if the, the pieces, the horses, aren't giving you some value, then you're not going to wait for the cart to show up. You're going to give up. So yeah. if those individual pieces of value, then you're going to be more likely to stay the course and, and uh, wait and hopefully get that cart going as well when you hitch up all the horses and get them all coordinated. Um, what we're going to do now, we're, we're coming to the end, we're running out of time, time just went whew, zoomed yeah. on by, and um, so uh, let's, let's have some parting shots, parting thoughts here. <laughs> <laughs> parting shots. <laughs> we're going to here. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's, some, what's some last little conclusion that you want to give us as we, as we move on on this particular topic? Horses and carts. Yeah, I think I want to. You're asking me, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> the um, uh, I think I just want to leave people with that hope, especially small businesses, that you know don't despise the day of small beginnings. Um, you know, you, if you're listening tonight, you got as much, at least as much, from John in Maryland tonight as you did from me, I and mean, they they shared so much wisdom coming out of their own experience. And that is the you know, last thing that John said is, um, you know, so much of this is just showing up and being persistent. And if you can do a little bit, but you do it consistently, it's again like that exercise analogy, you know. The first day you go out running or the first day that you go to the gym or whatever it is that you choose to do, um, you're going to actually feel more awful. You're going to be worse off, you know. And, <laughs> yeah. after first, and, and after the first week, you're going to be even more worse off. And, um, but, yeah. You know, we all know if you, if you keep doing it, it, it gets better. And then, the, you know, over time the benefits accrue. So, you know, don't give up. Um, you know, keep keep working at it. Um, keep trying out different things. Don't get discouraged. You know, if you have a, you know, put up a piece of content, you think it's the greatest thing in the world and, and everybody yawns, you know, instead of getting discouraged and saying, well, that's it, I'm never, never going to write again, I'm never going to make another video, you know, try to learn from it. Um, maybe try it from a different angle. Um, do it a little bit different way. Get some people around you, which is, this, is, this is especially relating to the content end of it, who you trust enough and you have a relationship with that they will tell you the truth. Um, you know, get people that will say, like, you know, I think I know why it's not working, you know, and everybody's just saying, like, you know, oh, fine, you know, plus one, move on. Um, but nobody ever shares with that and says, you know, um, you need, you know, you need to have those cold heart evaluations, but uh, don't give up, you know, be in it, and remember that it's something that grows over time. You're, you're planting seeds today that will grow in the future. Um, that little audience, those few fans, those few people that care about what you do, you know, treat them like gods, um, and, and promote them, and, and make them look like superstars, and you know, they will begin to promote you to other people and tell other people. And uh, if you've got something there, then it's gonna it's gonna grow um, over time. Great, great. And I, this was just a small part of what you just said, but I think that's so true. Is that um, you were talking about superstars? But when you elevate others in a true, genuine fashion, it reflects well on you at the same time. So oh, I yeah. think that that is something that um, is part of that whole social media piece is is not just thinking how can I build my own business but what have I discovered that's a value that will help my audience and elevate that person also because it just bounces back um, positively for you too it's, it's just um, it's one of the most gratifying parts of business, I think. Mm -hmm. That yeah. part right there. Yeah, yeah I good. agree. Well said. Good, good deal. Okay, well, we'll have our last uh, parting parting thoughts from us about what's coming next next uh, next month on this show. 
um, our next, we do this once a month, so we don't overload anybody, but we are the second Tuesday of every month. And next, our next show is on Tuesday, February 10th. And we are very pleased to have uh, Stefan Hovmanian on board yeah. to talk about email marketing. So we hope you can join us then. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mark, getting back to you, this has just been such a thrill for me. I'm sure John too. Yeah, it, really we can't thank it. you enough. It's been uh, just a very enlightening and hopeful hour for small business. So we thank you. Very, very much. Yes. Oh, I, I hope so. Thank you. That's so sweet of you to say. And, and I really enjoyed it, too. You guys are tremendous. Uh, you exemplify the way that you do this and what you bring across. Exemplify everything that's the best about um, social media marketing and, and social media involvement. You're doing it. You're living it. And the people who are associated with you, the people who get to come to these meetups, are, are very, very fortunate uh, to have you guys involved with them. So, you know, keep it up. I really appreciate what you what you bring into the marketplace and it's needed. Uh, so appreciate it. And I'll, and I'll just say it's my parting, parting thought that <laughs> when I just heard that, like, folks, come back next month, you know, for Stefan <laughs> Pavmanian, email marketing. Oh, my goodness. That guy is a genius at that, and he's so personable, and he communicates so well. Uh, that is one you will not want to miss. I, I'm going to come see that because we're trying to learn to do that better ourselves. Yeah, I, I need to see it too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. And Great round of applause for Mark. So that's it for this month. Thank you.